And as if by magic, I appear. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to another episode of Amazing Worlds, where today I'm going to be exploring the Black Magicians trilogy by Australian author Trudy Canavan. Alright, so as I was saying, um, today I'm going to be looking at the Black Magician trilogy by Trudy Canavan. Book 1, The Magician's Guild. There. Um, book 2, The Novice. And Book 3, The High Lord. Um, so, the premise of the story is uh, we meet and follow Sonia, who is a poor slum girl who is discovered as possessing really strong magical powers. I wonder where have I heard that before? Anyway, it's a little bit cliched, it's a little bit tropey, but 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 it's good. It, it works, um, it's interesting for the story, it doesn't add or detract anything much. Um, so we follow Sonia uh, as, as at first she tries to evade uh, the magician's guild, who are the people that control magic. Because in this world, if magic continues to develop inside the person totally uncontrolled, uh, it can lead to catastrophic consequences. Basically, people really cannot hold all that magic power inside them and they can sort of explode and create huge losses um, and damage across the world. And that is referenced uh, to a point back in time where that actually happened. Um, so book one sees us meeting Sonia and her trying to stay away from the Magician's Guild and really not trying to get involved with them with the help of his um, slum rat friend um, Kerry or Seri, however you pronounce it. Lots of interesting uh, made up names in, in this series. Um, so that's, um, that's book one, uh, Magician's Guild. Um, book two um, the novice, the title sort of gives it away. We see what happens. Sonia gets taken into the guild and we follow her apprenticeship and her learning and trying to control her powers, uh, much to the chagrin and um, annoyance of certain members of the guild. And again, I won't, um, I won't give anything away there, but it is an interesting read because in book one we are in the setting of the slums of the city of Imardin, where the action takes place, and then book two takes us to a new setting, which is the Magician's Guild, um, where the action takes place. And then finally, in book three, the High Lord, um, Sonia uh, moves out of the guild and into the bigger, wider world. So again, it's a nice sort of change of setting uh, with every book. We get to explore the world that through the kind of builds here. Um, and it's, it's good, it, it changes setting, it changes pace, um, and it keeps the books interesting. They're very easy to read, very easy to follow, pretty much single point of view chapters. Um, but interesting nonetheless, I mean, interesting enough that after reading um, the first trilogy in this world of Kiralia, uh, who reminds me of certain computer games, um, from my youth. Uh, I, I really like the names uh, in this series, Kiralia, Imardin, Sachakao, Sachakao is the, the land where um, like a warring faction uh, lives. They are really nice, I really like them. Um, so, as I was saying, enjoyed this so much so that I actually got the, uh, the other side here, um, Magician's Apprentice, which is a sequel to the first trilogy set a few hundred years before the action um, in the Magician's Guild takes place and I actually went as well to get the other trilogy which is behind me uh, here, the Traitor Queen, um, or the Traitor Spy trilogy which is not as strong as um, Magician's Guild and it follows um, another character with Sonia playing a bit of a background role. Now, I, I had the pleasure, I had the fortune of meeting Trudy Canavan um, at a book signing and she was kind enough to um, sign uh, 
Magician's Guild for me in there. And, and she also signed another of her books uh, for me. Really lovely woman. She, was, she came across as very composed, very calm, a very soothing presence. Um, she was very nice to, to talk to briefly. And um, the way the second trilogy ends, uh, there's a hint of more things to come in the future, uh, which I'll probably get into. And um, um, she's taking quite a long break from Kiralia, and I think in the meantime, she's just finished writing a four book series set in a different world, and possibly she keeps to what she told me and what, she, and what is hinted at at the end of the Traitor Queen series, there'll be more of Kiralia and Sonia to um, get involved with and yeah, um, looking forward to that um, in the years to come. So, um, the books, I, I, I like them, I like the covers, I like the covers, I saw them in in, um, in the bookshelves at bookstores and they're intriguing enough, they very that sort of sparse white with with the with the images, um, the different takes on the black magician. So really liked them. Uh, the new editions have got like slightly cooler uh, cover to them, but I, I really like them. And then it follows um, all the basics and um, that every good fantasy book should have. So in the first one, magician skill. What we get is maps of the city and maps of um, of the guild. Um, where the action takes place, and um, we also get a little map of the continent of Kiralia. So all of that's good. Um, magic system is um, is a very soft magic system. Um, basically, um, there are two main types of magic. There is white magic and black magic. And in in the land where Sonia lives and the guild that she eventually joins to learn. They practice uh, white magic and black magic is banned, is forbidden. We're not entirely sure why that is the case. Um, it, black magic involves some sort of ritual use of blood and is seen as evil and is totally banned. And within white magic there are three main strands. There are healers, uh, there are alchemists and there are war mages. Um, and the different magicians choose one of those three strands to to get involved with, and black magic is very prevalent in this sort of um, other countries, so the nation of Sashaka, where the main antagonists are, um, where they use black magic, um, where you can actually draw from other people's power to build up your own. So one black magician can be super strong and can really sort of um, face up to lots of uh, white magicians because they can store up uh, power and energy from other people which is why they keep slaves so again this black magic using nation slavery is a big thing which again in Imordin in the land of uh, Sonia that's also banned as well so we get lots of contrasting uh, cultures there um, and magic uses and types which makes it interesting um, it's some people will will call the books. Uh, they will categorize them in the YA, in the young adult um, uh, brand or branch of uh, fantasy literature. I didn't really feel that it is YA. It's it's not to me. It is not in the same vein as Harry Potter. I would definitely consider Harry Potter uh, for young adults. Um, Maybe, maybe I would consider his Dark Materials um, as Young Adults, certainly Chronicles of Narnia that, you know, falls firmly into Young Adults. I wouldn't consider uh, Black Magician as uh, YA fantasy just because the main character is a girl that we see grow up doesn't necessarily make a YA to me. There's a certain dark themes in here uh, with the use of Black Magic and, and the Blood Rituals. Um, there's also a bit of an exploration of attitudes to homosexuality. One of the characters in the books is homosexual and um, that's not very well regarded or approved of in certain lands, but in other nations it is and there's no problem with it. Um, and I, to me I just realized that I didn't actually care about the sexuality of the characters in, in my fantasy books. Um, or maybe I didn't care 
because it really doesn't add anything to the story. It's not relevant to, to the plot, to the argument, to, to, to the hero's journey, to the unraveling of events. So I'm not saying I don't want it in my fantasy. I'm not saying I don't need it. All I'm saying is that for me, if you're going to feature certain things that are not um, your usual canon in the realm of fantasy, they need to have a reason to exist. Um, Oh, some people might argue that just for representation and diversity, you just you should simply have them. Um, I don't know. To me, it doesn't really add anything. But maybe, maybe it, it doesn't offend me either. I, I just thought that it added nothing to the story, and maybe just for the sake of taking ticking a box and showing representation of people of different sexual inclinations, it's okay. Um, f fine, fine. Um, I've got no problems. Um, with it, I suppose I wish that um, it meant something more to the story. That's all. Um, other than that, it's it's the books are good. They read easy. Uh, the prose is easy uh, to read. Uh, the ending is quite satisfactory. You do feel invested in Sonia and and Carrie and and the events that take place in the in the magicians' guild. So. Just to summarize, uh, I wouldn't necessarily classify it as YA. Um, definitely worth uh, diving into this world. As I said, I've got the prequel and the sequels up there, so I will. I wouldn't necessarily recommend them. I would say they are average fantasy books, which is not a bad thing. Um, I saw an interview with Brent Weeks, another fantasy author, and he said that by definition most fantasy books are going to be average, and I can agree with that, uh, being a maths teacher, you know, a lot of the stuff you're going to read is just going to be okay, um, or okay to good, and this certainly is the case, it is okay to good, um, so yeah, dive into the world of Kiralia, um, see what you think, please leave me a comment, please leave me a like, subscribe, let me know what you think, and even if, I don't care, even if you hit the thumbs down button, Give me a comment to tell me why. I, I don't mind um, exchanging opinions and getting involved in in conversation like that. This is the idea here. Um, I'm sharing what I like and what I think, and I'm more than happy to hear different opinions. So take care, and until next time, I'll see you soon. Bye.